ask unanimous consent that the following senators have up to five minutes each. Uh, myself, Senator Manchin, Senator Marshall, and Cassidy for up to 10 minutes before the roll call vote. Is there an objection? Without objection. Thank you. We've had to several times recently, and I'm talking about since the Biden administration came into office, to where when you can't legislate, all of a sudden you use executive orders and rulings. You've heard of the deep state. That's what happens when you can't get your way legislatively, which means you got to get 60 senators corralled here to do it, and you start doing things, in many cases, pushing legal limits administratively. That is when government has gone wild. I want to take you back to about a little over a year and a half ago when COVID was in the rearview mirror. If you remember, there was the effort to try to force vaccinations on every individual in the country working for an employer with 100 employees or more. That would have been almost everyone. It had folks in Indiana that owned businesses wondering, now that this was all in the rearview mirror, why would you do it? It's government gone wild. It was our office that dusted off the Congressional Review Act that said enough is enough. Of course, Speaker of the House Pelosi wasn't going to take it up there. We did pass it in the Senate. And thank goodness the Supreme Court came in about two weeks later and said, enough is enough. That's unconstitutional. Had to do it another time. On all your hard-earned money you put into your investment accounts, you've heard of ESG, Environment, Social, and Governance. That should be of equal value as return on investment. You know it shouldn't be. That's when you're trying to weave in ideology along with investment returns. We had to dust it off again, and that passed in the Senate and the House and generated President Biden's first veto. The number of times we've had to do it since then, too many to count. We're doing it again here this evening. I've led bipartisan letters to the NLRB, National Labor Relations Board, raising concerns about its proposed rule regarding joint employer status over the past couple years, to no avail. And what they're wanting to do again, this is getting into Main Street, into small business, and leverage that executive power to do something that would mess up what's worked well for a long time. This rule replaced the 2020 joint employer rule that focused on direct and immediate control as the criterion and replaced it with indirect and reserved, which means it's subjective. You can do whatever you want because you don't want that particular rule that would have kept it where it's always been and where it's worked. It's caused confusion for franchise owners for years. It's going to affect franchisees just as bad. Those are the Main Street business owners. It would have immediate and long-term negative effects on millions of workers and thousands of businesses when the economy is already reeling from the inflation and the sugar high economy based upon borrowed money spent to help few parts of it. That's what they've given us, and then they want to do this. Franchisers and franchisees, uh, Main Street America gets impacted by it. Moving forward to this misguided rule, the NLRB would hurt entrepreneurs. That's the backbone of our economy. They're the ones that start things that someday may become a larger business. 32% of small business owners say they would not have a business if it was not for franchising. The NLRB should not move forward with this joint employer rule because it will have a negative economic impact. It's actually inconsistent with common law. The board should maintain the 2020 rule. It wasn't broken. It was working. 
They seem to be doing everything that tries to fix it when it's not broken. I yield. Senator from West Virginia. Madam President. Senator from West Virginia. Madam President, I rise today and I agree with my friend and my colleague from Indiana, Senator Braun, my friend and my colleague from Louisiana, Senator Casting, my friend and my colleague from, uh, from Kansas, Senator Marshall. I rise today in support of the joint resolution of congressional disapproval to overturn the National Labor Relations Board's new joint employer rule. This rule is just another example of exec executive overreach and the partisan politics that we deal with all too often. Small businesses are the heart of our economy. From states like myself and West Virginia, small rural states, this is the backbone of our business society. And especially, uh, we have 98% of our businesses are small in West Virginia. I don't have one city in my state with a population greater than 50,000. So I'm a million seven hundred thousand of small towns and cities. This is who we are. The COVID-19 pandemic was hard on small businesses and franchises with an estimated 32,700 franchise businesses closing during the first six months of the pandemic. The last thing they need is greater uncertainty caused by this rule. And the joint employer rule has caused confusion for franchise owners for years, telling them they could be held liable for actions taken by businesses with their brand, potentially subjecting them to co corporate control. Franchising is a pathway to entrepreneurship for Americans across the country, and it helps build generational growth by providing access to capital, training, managerial assistance, and a system of support which is so needed in small rural areas. The franchise model helps many Americans overcome the numerous barriers to owning their own business. For the first time, the dream of coming true of having your own business and controlling your destiny. One out of every three franchise owners say they wouldn't own a small business without the franchise business model that they buy into. The unique model is used by over 5,000 independent businesses in my state of West Virginia, providing over 45,000 jobs. This new rule has further confused the issue and put the franchise model at risk. Under this rule, businesses are liable for entities they do not control. I repeat, under this rule, businesses will be liable for ent entities that they do not control. And it makes no sense. Let me give you an example. If under this brand there are uniform standards for their products or they would require hair nets to be worn, they would then be found as a joint employer. As simple as that. If that's part of the model you buy into, part of the franchise you bought, has certain requirements to deliver products safely and healthy. This is despite the fact that they have no responsibility, no responsibility or role in hiring, firing, or wage decisions for their employees of any way, shape, or form. Does that make any sense? It just doesn't. Franchisees for years have enjoyed the independence of running their own businesses and making their own decisions about their employees, working with their employees in joint relationships. If a franchisor is now held responsible for these decisions, the franchise model will essentially no longer exist. The guidelines won't be there because they're totally liable and responsible. Bottom line is this rule will shut the door of thousands of Americans who want to start or maybe already have a business and fulfill the American dream. That is why I introduced the Congressional Review Act with my senators I just mentioned as our colleagues to make clear this rule does not work. Businesses should not be liable for entities they do not control. The National Labor Relations Board moved forward on this rule without bipartisan support. And I can assure you they did not have bipartisan support. A member of the board even found that this rule would be even more catastrophic than previous attempts to change the standard and potentially harmful to our economy. We know previous attempts to change the joint employer standard resulted in a 93%, I repeat again, 93% increase in litigation, a loss of over 376,000 jobs, opportunities, and were eventually struck down by the courts. This doesn't work. The courts have already ruled it doesn't work, and it'll happen again, but here we go. Here we go. We should be focused on bolstering our economic, bolstering our economic growth and protecting Main Street businesses, not obstructing them. I'm standing here today for the thousands of small businesses, not only in my state, but across the country. There are hardworking employees in the surrounding communities who are going to be harmed by this rule. I encourage my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, my friends on both sides, of the party, Democrat and Republican, 
basically to vote yes on this resolution and allow us to continue to work towards a bipartisan common sense solution instead of a more partisan political solution. Thank you, Madam President. I, you, huh? In the absence of a quorum, I notice. Madam President, the, soon, the Senate will soon vote on the Congressional Review Act resolution of disapproval, hoping to overturn the Biden administration's new joint employer rule. This policy threatens the viability of the American franchise model in favor of coerced unionization. There are 800,000 franchise businesses operating in our communities. They employ over 9 million Americans. The franchise model has particularly empowered underrepresented groups in the business community, such as women and people of color. This allows them to become that successful business owner to live the American dream, creating opportunity for their own family and for their employees. President Biden's new joint employer rule threatens this critical business model. It forces legal liability onto franchisors for the, labor, for the labor decisions of the individual franchise owners, despite the franchisor having no operational authority over the business's employees. Saddling, saddling franchisors with liability for thousands of franchise owners that operate as small businesses is a sure way to destroy the system of franchising. According to the International Franchise Association, when the Obama administration imposed a similar policy, small businesses lost $33 billion per year collectively due to increased liability costs. The Biden administration's policy has strong opposition from Republicans and Democrats. It is also opposed by over 100 organizations, including those representing small businesses and workers who will be severely impacted. It is not surprising that the joint employer rule is a major priority for large labor unions. It is easier for unions when they only have to negotiate with one major entity rather than with each individual small business. This allows the union to wield more influence in the collective bargaining process. President Biden's promise to have the most pro-union administration in history this priority should not be making it easier to forcibly and coercively unionize workers while undermining the business model of the establishments they work for. It should be supporting workers and increasing economic opportunity. Unfortunately, this policy does the opposite. It threatens the jobs of the over 9 million American workers employed by and earning a living from the franchise business model. I close by encouraging all my colleagues to pass this bipartisan CRA resolution, support those Americans who otherwise would not be able to own a business without the franchise model. Let's stop this harmful overreach that only hurts jobs and economic development in our communities and denies opportunity for Americans seeking a better life. With that, I yield. Madam President. Senator from Kansas. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank also the Senator from the great state of Louisiana for his leadership in this very important issue. The joint employer rule from the NLRB will crush the franchise model as we know it. It's going to crash the model of business that brought financial freedom to millions of Americans. What I love about the franchise models everywhere I go, visiting with these owners, it's been so helpful for, for minorities, for veterans, for women. These franchises provide a model, uh, the, the framework on how to be successful. But this new rule from the NLRB would destroy the model as we know it. Now, I'm not sure that Kansas had the first franchise, but in my mind they did. I remember when Pizza Hut started, started by some students out of Wichita State University delivering pizzas uh, to their fellow students. And not long after that came rent center Freddy's Frozen Custard, Good Sense, Subs, and many, many more. And that story's been repeated all across the country. These businesses started off small, but through franchising, were able to grow into national successes. 
Today, there's 7,500 franchises employing 75,000 employees across the state. Now, again, everywhere where I go across the state of Kansas, people want to talk about inflation. But what's becoming more prominent, especially to a business owner, is regulations. Just that this overburden of regulations that's keeping us all down and driving up the cost of doing business. More regulations means more money, more cost to that owner. You know, the question I get from folks is, why does the White House want to fix something that's not broken? Listen, this is, the system is working just fine right now. So why are we trying to fix it? I remember President Reagan talking about the 10 words that every American hates to hear. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. We need less regulations, not more regulations. This definition is overly broad, and this rule threatens the success stories for all those happy endings, for all those American dreams that, we, that have become true. Instead of being independent business owners, franchisees will be reduced to middle managers, killing jobs, killing income as, as well. This rule attempts to trigger joint employer status if two employers share the essential terms and conditions of employment, but then talks about indirect control as one of these terms and conditions. So instead of making overly broad and burdensome rules, we should pass bills like our own Save Local Business Act, which provides clear and consistent standards for triggering joint employment status. I ask my colleagues to join us in supporting this CRA. This rule from the federal government is a solution in search of a problem. Thank you so much. I yield back. Under the previous order, H.J. Res. 98 is considered read a third time. The question occurs on passage of the joint resolution. Is there a sufficient second? The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Bennett, Mrs. Blackburn.